Hey, greetings everyone, Chris here. I want to talk a little bit about just canned goods and how it, how it came to be that I have this belief that canned goods will last probably longer than I will last. Uh, and it was a, it's a bit of a gamble because when you're, you're building up your stores for, you know, preparing for whatever, worst taste type scenarios, um, you know, the, the problem that you face with food storage specifically is the fear that it will go bad or that it will expire or in some way become spoiled such that you can't use it, right? And so that's simply just pouring money down the drain, which is kind of what we do with insurance a little bit. But uh, if you ever need insurance, you definitely appreciate that you have it. But so with food stores, you know, if you if, if they're going to spoil, then you're in the situation of I'm going to buy food and I have to rotate it out over some periodic basis, whether it's two years, five years, 10 years, pick a period. And you just know that you're going to be taking food and throwing it away. So early on, when I started thinking about that, I wanted to prepare and I wanted to start to build up some food stores. Um, I did a lot of research on how that works, right? And what am I getting myself into? Because I was familiar with Mountain House. I'd grown up and we had that, you know, camping food. So I knew that there was food out there that I could buy. It would last a long time. But canned goods seemed just like an obvious thing to look at because I could buy them cheaply. I can just go to the grocery store. There they are. Uh, but so I did a little bit of research and I'll, I want to share with you some of the information that I found. It's, it's funny. It's 10 years later, maybe even over 10 years later, and it's still online. So this was, I remember looking at this and this is a blog from uh, this post specifically, right? So uh, we, we know that uh, 2009, I think I, I think I became interested in prepper, preparations around 2006, 2007. And, and for me, right, it was, it was a peak oil scenario that I had, fall and pray to that, you know, I, I read a lot of information online, uh, read a lot from people who made very compelling cases that the world was running out of oil and it was a finite resource. And that by the, by 2013, it would be every man for himself type of scenario. And I'm like, Oh my God. Well, well you know, it sounds like it could make sense. So, um, you know, and I, over the years I learned my lesson, but it didn't, but, but, it sent me into a, a little bit of an internal panic mode where what would I do if something like that did happen? So, you know, the, the squirrel in me starts to want to squirrel stuff away. So as part of that panicky squirrel process, I began to explore my options and I stumbled onto a lot of blogs. I did a ton of reading from uh, forums and this one in particular hit me. It said, these products, these products include the, the following among many others. And he's basically saying the, makes canned product safe for use indefinitely. I read that and went, could it be? Really? And then it says, do any more beef stew at the top of the list? Hormel corned beef that I've done prepper reviews on both of these products and I have a lot of both of these products. There's another one on here. I don't have any chicken stew, although I'd be interested in that. I don't have any Hormel beef hash. But another one that was on the list that, that I had identified or had been identified for me through reading was uh, Denny Moore Beef Stew, Hormel can Corned Beef, and then Crisco, right? The, exactly what you think, white uh, lard, essentially vegetable oil that's, you know, solid. And these were items that I, you know, had come across that were, people had said would not go bad. And so Crisco, I was like, oh, you know, I can't imagine eating Crisco. But if you're familiar with Alaska, uh, there's part of the native cultures that they use Crisco and they add berries to it. And it's called Eskimo ice cream. And I've never had it. But um, when I thought about I saw Crisco on the list. And I said, huh, oh, well, there is evidence that it is used. Obviously, we use it for baking and cooking and other things, but also that people use it as a basic ingredient and just add other things to it as a way to, it's huge in calories, right? So when I started to research all of this, all of this I learned that you know, there's nutritional value, there's calorie value, um, and those are both important types of things that you need to consider. But at the end of the day, it's energy, right? Your body needs fuel, fuel keeps you going. When you start to run out of fuel, uh, you know, you slowly will de decline and starve to death. It takes a long time. And I've also learned that a human body can go a lot longer than you would think without food. Right. So there's this you have an ability to fast for days without any negative consequences. So 
that's another set of videos that we'll do at some point. But so I stumbled onto these types of articles and then, you know, you look at Hormel and they've actually updated their FAQ. If you, if you're trying to access the FAQ that I was looking at years ago, it's just not there. Um, but, but the question is, what is the set shelf life of a Hormel product in an unopened can? And they say, I'm sure this was crafted by legal and risk experts. The product is always safe to consume as long as the seal remain has remained intact, unbroken and securely attached. However, the flavor and freshness of the product gradually begin to decline after three years from the manufacturing date. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of very subjective terms thrown into that. The flavor, the freshness, the freshness, I will say that could be objectively measured. Um, it's either rotten or it's not, but, but there might be grades there. Uh, it gradually begins to decline after three years, right? Which is probably what they have on the bottom. It says best used by. But what, what does that gradual rate look like? Is that gradually over, over two years? Is that gradually over 100 years, right? And at what rate? So uh, when I read between the lines, I say, well, you know, I've been testing this food and it tastes just fine. It hasn't made me sick. I haven't vomited or, you know, become ill. I can't attest to what the, the nutritional value is. But I just had, I, I did a taste test earlier today with some old Mountain House food and it filled me up. I was hungry before I ate it. Now I'm not hungry. I don't have any negative feelings about it. So I suspect that that food, even though it's freeze dried and not a Hormel product, will, will, will serve me just fine 10 years from now when I try it again. But this was the genesis for my, 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 my decisions to start investing in canned goods and not really worry about this uh, the cost that might be associated with me having to throw out a bunch of old canned food. Once I was comfortable realizing, and I, and I, this is a personal thing, and I'm not advising that you, 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 uh, that you eat old canned food, right? That's a, a personal decision, but I felt much more comfortable that I would be able to eat canned food long past its prescribed best used by date or expiration date uh, by the manufacturers themselves. And there's a, actually historical precedent for this, right? So there's another site that I'd, I'd stumbled on about during this research period of my life. And there's this story about the, I think it's the Bertrand. Let's see, at the very top here. Is it, uh, where does it say, the steamboat? Oh, this is a different steamboat, Arabia. There's another steamboat called the Bertrand, which sunk. And so the story of the steamboat Arabia is that it was a Mississippi steamboat and uh, it sunk and it went down and then it wasn't recovered until years and years later. Uh, in the 1900s, well, here we go, 1988, was finally exposed. They, they excavated it, and they found a, a lot of preserved goods, all kinds of stuff, not just food, but pretty much anything a riverboat would be carrying for trade up and down the river. And so one of the, uh, well, here we go, uh, with a lack of air to spoil them, thousands of artifacts were recovered intact, including jars of preserved foods that, still, that are still editable, edible tested by one of the excavators themselves who ate a pickle right from it, said, no, oh, tasted perfectly fresh, right? So here we have it. This was 1988. Yeah, so they're excavating in 1988 where they found all these food supplies and other things. The vessel went down. Uh, let's see what the year is. 19 was bound, so it looks like it's 1856. It was supplies for 16 towns, 200 tons of precious cargo, but waiting silently at the surface, lost in the glare was this thick trunk of a huge fallen walnut tree. And so it sounds like a walnut tree took out the steamboat Arabia, sent it to the bottom of the Mississippi, where an excavation occurred 130 years later, pulled up food that had probably been, you know, in optimal storage conditions, which were... Uh, it was, there was no risk of air getting into them. There was no light and it was probably very cool. And all of these looked like they were glass jars. So glass wasn't going to degrade uh, through rust or anything else. And so, uh, you know, just some historical evidence that this stuff will hold up. Another bit of historical evidence, and I don't have the, the document loaded up here, is that honey is also a food store that can last hundreds of years. So, um, yeah, there was, I read about archaeologists that uncovered uh, Egyptian 
urns and, and their honey had been stored in them and it was still good that honey doesn't degrade. And so if you're looking for sugar, uh, sources for sugar that are gonna last a long time, you can buy some honey. Now I will say when honey freezes, it hardens, or if it, if it gets cold, it hardens and it, it might be hard to thaw out or it's not a thawing process. It becomes more solidified beyond just a freeze. And so, and what I, and I, I can tell you, cause this happened to me where I had some, uh, I had some, a big thing of honey, probably, I don't know, a couple gallons in a, some kind of plastic container. It was in my garage. My garage door got left open for some period of the day enough for this thing to, to harden. It didn't freeze. It just, the, the honey hardened. And I have it now with my food supplies and it's still hardened. Right. So I think that I might have to take it out, either chip it away and it's going to dissolve in my mouth. Or if I apply some heat or maybe some liquid or something. Uh, but yeah, honey can, it does not like to be frozen, but it will last a long time. And so uh, that's it, right? So do, do your homework for yourself, obviously. If you're in this, if you're in a position where you want to start to develop some, some food uh, stores and supplies, um, and there's, there, there's plenty of good reasons to do it. You can also do, you can jar yourself, right? And so if you study canning long enough, it won't, you won't be doing it long before you'll start to question, hmm, I could do jarring. And we've done a little bit of jarring here at our house. We jarred some, uh, some fruits and jellies. Uh, we have friends that, uh, that, uh, that, that go fishing and do uh, dip netting with for salmon. Um, friend that has rabbits, so all of these things can be jarred. I think you want to be very careful in the preparation of your of your uh, jarred goods, right? And that's a whole other series of videos that I'm not I'm probably not going to do because I'm not into jarring. Uh, but I do appreciate when friends friends and neighbors give me jarred food because um, it's generally delicious. But uh, but rest assured that some of this food that has a shelf life on it is it's just there to protect the company from from you know from liability right which there's nothing wrong with that's uh, that's what that's what they're uh, on the hook for is to protect their shareholders and protect employees and all of that but as consumers of this just know that some of the some of this food will last a long time and you don't necessarily have to worry about rotating large quantities of your food stocks if you're building up some kind of food supply that will last your family a month or two months or whatever it is that you deem necessary that will give you some peace of mind that um, if supply chains get cut, you know, which that's always a risk, um, that you'll have some reserves to fall back on, right? That, that doesn't involve DoorDash or somebody delivering food to you or you having to starve to death or, or whatever, eat, eat worms or eat bugs or that kind of stuff. So wanted to go back in time a little bit, show you how I, how I started, uh, you know, word to the wise, the internet has all kinds of stuff. And so, um, you know, obviously I, I, I bought into some panic things that I put in some things that I was reading that caused me to panic. I also bought into some things that caused me to believe that a uh, canned food will be okay. And as it turns out, that has held up that the canned food that I have, I kept it in, as people prescribe in a dry, uh, dry, cool, dark place. And I haven't had any problems. So you now if you find yourself in the same boat, please do your research, but have some confidence that you can build up food supplies without wasting money to do so. Uh, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with that. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. Otherwise, I uh, hope you're doing well. Take care, as always, and uh, we'll see you next time.